So we are uh, so thankful for everybody listening to the Faith in the Fast Life podcast this morning. We just want to remind everybody, all of the listeners, that uh, it, I guess it really helps us if you go in and you subscribe to the podcast as well as uh, to rate the episodes and obviously to share. So we want to encourage all of our listeners to do that, especially as the story may impact your life or maybe you know somebody that it will impact so please yeah. like, share, all those things. This morning, we are honored to have Adrian Harris with us, uh, BMX hey. bike athlete from out in California. And as we get started, we just we started talking a little bit about sheep hills. And I think it's funny. I'm going to let him go into this message in a minute. But when we were talking before, he instantly said sheep hills. And I went, that's still around? Because like back when <laughs> I was a young man, I, I literally remember a... Um, Oh, a picture. In fact, I'm pretty sure I drew it in art class, so I'm going to have to post this to uh, our Instagram page. Uh, I did it in art class as a freshman in high school, and I did it with, uh, like, where you take a pen and you just do little dots, and it's like an artwork that's all dots, and it's, yeah. it was Todd Lyons doing a, uh, uh. like, a no-footed one-hander at Sheep Hills. <laughs> and uh, I just don't know why that came back. So Sheep Hill, so you were from that region. Tell me more. Yeah, um, man, we used to call him TL or Wild Man. He yeah. was, uh, it was just like, I remember seeing him down there and uh, Corey Nastasio, he actually moved from Florida down there and it was just him. So you got Wild Man and then you got Nasty Nastasio. It was just, you go down there and you see, people you grew up you know watching on the x games and everything and so i was like man i gotta go to sheep and uh i remember it was kind of an adventure uh one time you know i grew up in the city of whittier that was probably about 25 30 miles from sheep and uh and so we went and uh a friend of mine bryant he uh he decided he's like dude let's take the bus out there you know i was it was way before I got my license, you know, I was, I was like 16. And so we hop in the bus and the bus lets us off a couple miles from the beach. And so we rode the rest of the way. And, uh, Brian, his brother, uh, his brother is a pro bike rider, Freddie Chulo. And, uh, he's like, Hey, my brother will give us a ride back. So we're like, all right, cool. So we ended up riding the whole day. We're tired and hungry. And then, uh, we couldn't get a hold of his brother. So we're like a three hour bike ride mm -hmm. from the beat. I mean, from home, you know, so we ended up one of the guys that we went with, he actually rode home, but we we're so tired and hungry that we're just like, what are we going to do? And we're, we're at sheep and it's getting late. <laughs> you know, it's like eight, nine o'clock, nine 30. And, uh, we ended up sleeping at sheep Hills, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. So we stayed down there and uh, we had uh, just our jackets with us. It gets super cold because it's by the beach or cold to us. Really? I know people that grew up in Southern California like me. We think that like, you know, 50, 60 degrees is cold. And you guys are probably, that's nothing. You guys are walking around in shorts and everything. Yeah, I, I debated but, uh, on whether or not to put a jacket on this morning. It's 54 degrees outside right now or uh, something. Yeah, man. So. We're totally not used to that. We all we get is sun out here, you know that. But uh, yeah, sheep, sheep hills is just a place where it's always been around to me. Um, you know, been riding well over twenty years, and so we went there. You see all the the icons in BMX, and uh, that's just kind of the training grounds for a lot of people. Um, Sean Butler, Emmett Crooms, you know, every everybody that you could uh, think of basically on, on the on the West Coast, they've been to sheep, you know, and so it was yeah. just a cool experience for me. Yeah, so it's iconic. So did, have you always grown up in that area? Um, I grew up, I grew up in L.A. County, and so to make it out to sheep, not having a car and everything, it was kind of rare, but street was always around, and then we had our home trails called, uh, called uh, Creek Park Trails. You know, CPL, Creek Park Locals. And so, um, again, you had a lot of, uh, you know, like I remember the first time Corey came down and he brought a bunch of guys with him. One of the guys I grew up uh, watching was uh, Sean Butler. And so they, they brought him with them, uh, you know, with them. And so uh, I met him. 
that was a, kind of a big deal for me. You know, there's not a whole lot of, especially at that time, African American writers in the sport that were just, you know, doing as well as he did. So it was cool for me to meet him. And I still, to this day, I still able to talk to him and hang out. And so, um, grew up riding trails. That was my favorite. I feel like I'm a trail rider at heart, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and street street was a, was a big thing because street was free. Like it was just, you go outside and you could jump off curbs and rails and stuff. And so mostly street. And then I, when I had a chance, I just kind of got into dirt riding. I love the rhythm. So that was the yeah. uh, biggest thing for me, you know? Yeah. And did you say that, um, uh, before that you were, you started out racing, is that kind of your background? Yeah, definitely a racing background. Um, racing, is, it's kind of like when, you know, parents get their kids into soccer and stuff. So they got to take them out and get the cleats and the uniform and all that. And so when I started racing, uh, what did it for me was the, was the movie Rad. Like, uh, I remember jumping off curbs and stuff. I didn't even really know it was a sport, you know. And then this kid down the street. You know, uh, I hit him up and we would always meet up and, and just jump off curves, make brick and board jumps, you know. And then I seen this movie Rad and that was it for me. Like, I was like, whoa, other people do this as a sport, you know. And so uh, years after that, when I was 12, I got into racing. Racing is fun because it's like, it's kind of a foundational thing. Once you get, you know, you get comfortable on your bike through racing, racing around a track and then. I couldn't do it for too much longer because my parents really couldn't afford it. We had to pay for practices and, you know, number plates and, and all that stuff. And, um, so I got into racing. That's kind of my background. I think everybody should start off in racing. It's, it's fun. And then kind of see where it goes from there, you know? Yeah. So I got into racing. I didn't race long and, uh, my parents couldn't afford it. So I just started jumping, you know, riding around the streets. That was always free. So, yeah, but racing background, I wouldn't mind starting to race again, you know? Yeah. It's wild now. Like, you see the NBL and uh, people are, the jumps are so far. <laughs> like, yeah. it's crazy. It, they're so fast now. It's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty, it's completely different. Like, I remember in the, uh, you know, when I first started racing, uh, um, and a lot of those guys, uh, like, their seats were up really, really high. <laughs> yeah. you remember that like the seats yeah. were boosted all the way up and now like you look at the guys and like their seats like like all the way down they're clipped in with pedals like it's it's pretty yeah. intense like it's uh it's definitely some made made some changes and you're definitely dating yourself as far as the rad movie right i heard uh, uh yeah. i think we were talking with vic murphy a little while back yeah. and we talk about the fact that they did they just re-release rad or it was in the movie theaters in october yeah at some point. man they they just brought it back to theaters. I haven't. Hopefully, I could find it somewhere. I haven't had a chance to go out and see it, but I thought that was crazy. I thought that was awesome that they brought yeah. it back. And uh, I met Vic Murphy a while. A while. I actually met him uh, several years ago at a Calvary Chapel in, in Costa Mesa here in in Orange County. And then you know I hit him up online and everything. But growing up, that iconic. We all know the iconic uh, one foot table. That was, yep. I never thought I'd be able to meet the guy. I thought, you know, I think that was awesome. But, um, you know, met him and, uh, and seeing that. And so to see this movie rad and, and just live out that I iconic thing and just look back at it. And, 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 you know, I didn't ever thought I'd be where I'm at now being able to meet all these guys and ride. So tons of fun, man. It's just the, uh, it's like a big family, the sport, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's a cool, cool little culture within a, within a culture, yeah. if you will. Um, so been in California your whole life, started out racing, uh, kind of moved out of racing into just street riding and hitting the jumps and all those kind of things. What are like some of the highlights of, uh, of, uh, the BMX lifestyle and the things you've accomplished? Um, I think one of the huge parts of it is being able to meet just literally people all around the world, especially now because uh, social media has made that possible. You know, um, even right now, I just turned 40. And so you're trying to, like, I'm trying to figure out how everything balances out with like a, you know, a regular job, like career and traveling. It's still in me to ride, ride bikes. You know, it's, it's kind of like, 
you get to see the direction that some people go and, and some of the people that you looked up to growing up, um, they turned, you know, you get into like thirties and forties and then you got Dennis McCoy mm. well into his fifties, still competing and like, you know, throwing down flares, Jamie Bestwick in his fifties. And, um, I believe in his fifties and, um, uh, and so you just kind of have to, it's, it's a little bit difficult to figure out like how that's going to play out for you. But I think the highlights was just being out with the stunt dudes. You know, I hit up, uh, I was able to get into a couple of trips with John. And um, I think the, the coolest part is having, being saved and knowing someone else that's saved going on a trip with them. And it wasn't just the riding, you know, like we were driving across, you know, 12 hours to Tennessee and we had the best time. And it's crazy how I always tell people about this. It's when I, whenever I go on a missions trip or something like this and riding, the Lord always helps me. I mean, I'm going off of like two hours of sleep and we get to Tennessee to do a show and I'm completely energized. Like I've had no caffeine, <laughs> you know, I didn't have a Red Bull like I usually do. I'm working, you know, when I'm at home working all these hours. I'm dead tired, but like I go on this business trip and I'm completely energized, like no sleep. And the Lord just opened, opens doors that way and he helps you when you're doing his work. And so that was definitely the highlights. Um, just being out with the stun dudes, um, having to go on a trip with them. Um, one of the, another highlight of my life really was, um, it was my first overseas missions trips with the church I go to elevate ministries. And um, that was to England, London, England. Um, I'm so thankful that I have pastors that that have an open heart and say, hey, this guy loves BMX. This is how he got saved. Um, and so they stood behind me completely in that and so in every way of support. So I went out to England and um, I got to take my bike. We went to these, uh, I forgot what these banks were called. They're, they're pretty well known in uh, England, in London. So I went to those. And uh, packed up my bike, you know, got to go out there. I remember one time before that trip, my bike actually got stolen. The church went out. I had no idea they were going to do this. They went out and bought me a bike and uh, replaced my bike and went on this trip to England. Had the time of my life being able to, you know, after getting saved, being able to put ministry with BMX and, and, and put the two things that I really enjoyed together. That was just everything for me. So, um that was a London and Estonia trip. That was one of the highlights, being able to go out and ride with the stunt dudes, um, being able to work a full-time job and still ride BMX in, in my in my 40s, you know, is something that I really enjoy. If someone were to ask me, you know, how long are you going to ride? I don't really know the answer to that because, you know, I remember getting out on my bike um, and riding is just kind of like, you know, how long am I going to ride? Like, what do I do? And, but that was 10 years ago, you know? And so here I am today. <laughs> Back at 30 when riding. you felt I old, right? Take one day at a time. And so those are my highlights. Yeah. So, so yeah. back at, back at 30 years old, when you felt old, you're like, man, how much longer yeah. am I going to do this? And now you're 40 and you're like, oh wow. Okay. So 40 is really not that bad. Um, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't really know how it's going to go yet. You know, I just kind of take one day at a time, you know? Yeah, no, that's awesome. So, so tell us more. Uh, you mentioned like that's how you got saved. So we kind of talk about the BMX career and, the, and your love of bicycles and all that kind of stuff. Like, did you grow up in a church family? Like, did you guys did you guys do those kind of things, or what's what's the story of how you got saved? Tell me more. Um. Well, I didn't grow up. I remember when I was super young. Um, of course, like when you get saved, like you look back and you see some things, you know. But uh, I remember going to church, just like being in church when I was just a couple of years old, you know, and I look and I see old pictures or my mom kind of dressed me up. And but we weren't necessarily like a, a Christian family. Like we didn't, you know, that was that was it. Like when I just remember that being in a church, you know, I guess it was like a nursery or something. And uh, we never really went back to church after that. You know, I didn't grow up going to church or anything. And so the way that I got saved is that, um, you know, I grew up riding bikes and uh, I actually almost died on three different occasions. Um, I was I was hit by a car three different times 
And so I remember uh, just after school, that's all I did. Like I went to school after school, I rode my bike, you know, that was it. That was just the thing. I didn't want to do anything else. I started, you know, I got into basketball for a while at high school. I made the team and then I just quit because <laughs> I wanted to ride my bike. And so I remember riding home from school with a friend and um, it wasn't any like crazy injuries, but it was one of those things where, you know, a little to the left or a little to the right. And I would have been taken right under that car. So there was a time where I started playing football and a uh, wide receiver had all my gear and everything. And so after the game, I went out, rode my bike and uh, it's kind of funny. Like I went riding, I was crossing the street and uh, this van, I guess he didn't see me. He hit me and knocked me off my bike and ran completely over my bike. Like I got my bike back and it was the forks were completely twisted. Like a pretzel, the wheel came off. He ran completely over my bike and uh, just barely missed me and missed my head. You know, and I was on the ground for a while. I, long story short, I was fine after that. No serious injuries. But, um, and so both situations were like that. Um, I was coming down this hill in Whittier where I grew up, the city of Whittier, on another occasion. And um, it was actually my first time riding with headphones on. And so you kind of get in the zone where you're not paying attention. <laughs> and I was coming down this hill and uh, crossing the street. And I can't hear anything, obviously. And so this truck was coming up. I look and I see all this, this smoke past me, you know, and then I look and this truck was like right here by me, you know, and I, and, you know, I looked to my left and uh, I mean, it was so close to me. He locked the wheels up for about 50 feet, skidded and just missed me. And so um, when I, uh, one day I got a flyer to a skate park. And at this time, there wasn't, it wasn't like it is now. Like, there's just about a skate park in every city, it seems like. Mm -hmm. But back then, there wasn't, you know, 20 years ago, I've been saved about uh, 21 years. So back then, there wasn't, there wasn't a whole lot of skate parks. And so I got a flyer to the skate park, and we're like, oh, we got to check this out. And we kept reading on this flyer, and it says it's at a church. And, you know, skate parks at this time, they were far and few, but the skate parks that were around, they didn't allow bikes. So we're like, hey, it's at a church. They should allow bikes if they want us to come to church. You know? <laughs> and so I like how like, you hey, bartered with out. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> let's check out the skate park. And so we're like, all right, my dad dropped us off. We get to the skate park. There's this event with like four or 500 people. And there was all there's, there's graffiti on the walls. And, you know, it's like a full on event. And so we hit them up. We're like, Hey, can we ride our bikes here? And, um, they're like, Hey, you know, there's a lot of people right now. We got to wait till everything dies down. And so, uh, and so we did that. We waited. It was probably 11, 12 o'clock at night. And so this guy comes out and he's like, um, well, yeah, you guys can ride now. Things have died down. There's not too many skaters. So I rode the skate park. And uh, again, this, it turns out this is at a church. It was a pastor that I just talked to and said that it was okay for me to ride. So I rode the skate park. I loved it. And so for that reason, I kept coming back. And then as someone invited me to church, the actual, uh, um, you know, session. Um, uh, and so church was on Wednesday nights. It was the youth. And so I went in and um, I was really feeling what they were saying, you know, and they gave an, uh, uh, they gave an altar call and I didn't respond to it right away. Cause I was just like, Oh, I'm here with my friend. And, I don't want him to think I'm weird or anything like that. And so uh, I kept coming back, though. You know, I learned that, you know, people were just like inviting me to, to eat after church. And I was just like, why do these people like me so much? You know, I'm just kind of a regular guy just came in on my bike. And I just felt like these people had love for me, you know. And, mm -hmm. and then later on, I learned that the love that these people had for me, the love of Christ is like that times a thousand, you know? And so I went to a little bit after that, within that year, I went to uh, what they call a harvester's homecoming. It was basically a conference, a Bible conference. And the craziest thing happened. So I don't really know much about, you know, prophetic word or, you know, when God gives people a word or anything like that. But, oh, you know, what's funny too, I'm wearing an orange shirt. I'll, I'll tell you how that relates right now. <laughs> and so 
this conference came up and so uh you know the conference was going on it was a week long and there's this pastor that's there that they invited to come out and speak and for some reason i felt like he was going to speak to me it was weird like again i just got saved and so everything is kind of new to me i don't really know anything and so he was walking back and forth after he was preaching and he began prophesying over people you know and uh and so I was sitting there kind of in the middle of the pew. There's like 500 people at this conference. And he looks over. He's like, you in the orange shirt. He's like, stand up. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, this guy's going to like call out my sin and everything. I'm like, geez, why did I come to this conference? I was so embarrassed. And, like, and so I stand up. And um, he's like, do, do you know that you could have died on three different occasions? Like, do you know that? And I thought about it. And it was, you know, when I got hit by a car and um, I said, yeah, I, I think I know what you're talking about. And he says, well, you, you almost you could have died, like you wouldn't be here right now. And he says, but God's got a plan for your life. And so ever since then, I that's what kind of locked me in. Like, man, I got to live for God. Like he totally he, he spared my life. And I got to live this out, you know? And so ever since then, I've been living for God and, um, and just, you know, the Bible says to do all the more to make your election sure. And so I, I think I, I just hold that scripture and, um, yeah, so it's been, it's been crazy. That's how I get saved. Right, man. That's awesome. So, so tell me, you, you told us about two different instances of the almost dying. Like what was the third one? Like you got the um, one the time the van was, almost got you and ran over the bike, right? And the bike was crumbled, uh, but like it barely missed you. Go, uh -huh. go deeper on the other ones. Um, that was the van that, that, you know, barely missed me when I was wearing the headphones. And, you know, from the, from when the, the truck locked up the brakes, all the smoke passed. And so that was the second one. And the third one, I actually went to the spot where I almost got hit. So I was in this alley. And there was this uh, loading dock. It was pretty cool. Like it was just this random loading dock. We would go up and manual across it and everything with a friend that I grew up with. And so, again, at this time, obviously I'm not saved, but I was coming out of this alley. There was a, uh, a post office across, across the other side of the alley. And I was coming out and coming out into the alley. And there's this wall right here. So you can't really see. And so for some reason, I felt like something told me to stop, like, watch out, you know, you couldn't hear the truck coming or anything, but I stopped and, you know, the walls kind of right beside me. As soon as I stopped, this mail truck came flying mm. through the alley. I mean, you could feel the wind across my face. That's how close it was. And I stopped. I was just like, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe I was just kind of stunned at that point when. I would have been seriously injured or dead. There's just no other way around it. And, um, and even like I said, at that, I didn't get saved until years later. Like, you know, you don't really think about, you know, how salvation happens. Like, what am I supposed to do? And yeah, I mean, you walk out of there and you're like, you're grateful, you know, but unless somebody kind of points you towards Christ, you don't really have that direction. Like, you could think about going into a church, but you never really get around to it. You know, some people I never did. Um, and so that was the, the third, uh, the third instance, you know, the third situation. It was, it was scary. Yeah. It was scary. Man. And at that time before being saved, like you didn't even realize, right? Like you just, you're like, I'm lucky. Right. It felt oh, like yeah, I, I got so lucky that truck didn't hit me, but yeah. you don't even realize yeah. that it's a God thing. Right. Like I, I think back to you, my, you know, my story in the, the firefighting career, right? Like I, I saved that little boy and it wow. was, uh, it, it wasn't me. And I look back at that now at the time, I'm like, Oh yeah, I just got lucky. Like I turned into the right room. Um, yeah, it wasn't me at all. Like I know that now that's kind of the same thing. Like you three different times, like he had a plan. He had a, he had a plan on your life. And then to have somebody yeah. prophesy that too, like, that's awesome, man. That's so cool. Yeah. So, it's it was crazy. I remember when um it really uh I think it really hit me because last uh I usually try an outreach, I'll go to the skate park on my bike and I like to share. And um and so collectively last Saturday we went on an outreach. We're like, man, we gotta hit the streets. 
And so we went into what's called the orange circle, just kind of like this plaza where it has a roundabout. And in the middle, you know, it's got like park benches, perfect place to outreach. Mm -hmm. And so we went in there with a little PA system and a mic and, um, and just a handful of us, you know, we had signs that says, we are the church. And it said, and then another one that says, you know, need prayer and then a question mark. And so we just kind of randomly hit up people. Some people were just kind of like, don't talk to me about that. Thank you, but don't talk to me about that. And then other people were pretty open. Um, and so uh, what I'm saying is the coolest feeling was when you invite someone and they actually come, you have to put your kind of put yourself in a place to before I was saved, you know, and like, what was I thinking? Like people coming up to me mm -hmm. and everything. And so the coolest feeling is when you're out there and, you know, the Bible says you got to take your seed, the, the, the parable of the sower, you take your seeds and you throw them out there. Some of it falls on the rocks and the wayside. You don't know what's going to work. You know, you just kind of have to throw your seeds out there and you're hoping that, that someone would come to know the Lord. And so uh, we went out there and we outreached, we prayed about it. And that was on a Saturday. So the next day, Sunday church, you know, and so these two young ladies came in. I was like, hey, I met you guys yesterday and thanks for coming out. You know, they first came, they got dropped off. It was the first time to church and uh, it was just a blessing, man. We ran into another guy that um, got saved uh, and he's in a, you know, recovery home. And he's talking about how difficult it was to just to live for God in there because no one else is, you know, and uh, we got to pray for him. And so, yeah, just kind of put yourself in a place to where before I was saved and, you know, having that in mind, sharing with people and just kind of hanging out, having fun, you know, and say, hey, man, you know, just expressing how much God loves him and inviting them out. And and uh, you just don't know what's going to happen for people. You don't know where they're at. But, you know, one plants, one waters, and they just allow God to give the increase, you know? Yeah, that's what's so awesome, man. So, man, it's it's been so awesome having you here this morning. The um, yeah, if, you, if you've listened to the podcast, you always hear me say, what's the one thing you want to leave the listeners with? And we'd, we're obviously hoping that we reach the unreached with these podcasts. So maybe they're an unreached person. Maybe they're a person that's uh, maybe a little lukewarm right now or whatever it might be. Like, what's one thing that Adri wants to leave with the listeners today? I would say, I think one of the greatest things about, about Jesus would be forgiveness. He doesn't so much care about what you've done in the past. He's more concerned about what the decision that you can make today. And if you're watching this, I want you to know that God loves you and that your life can literally be changed completely around today with a simple prayer. You know, Romans 10, 9, it says that if you believe and confess your sins, you shall be saved. We could, I don't care what you've done. God, there's people all over the Bible that would, that, that, uh, that done horrible things and God has forgiven them. If you're just willing to repent, God, don't worry about how things would, uh, you know, you're going to work things out. God, God's got a plan. And just uh, know that God loves you and that you could receive him and he could change your life around. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, man. That's awesome. And to all the listeners, don't don't forget that. Like Romans ten nine, like who do you know that's in this position that that need to do that? I, I often hear people say, like, well, I'm not worthy of that, or like the non believers out there thinking that there's no way they can uh, you know, be where we are. And, uh -huh. um, Adrian, you talked a lot about, you know, thinking back to how you were before you were saved. And I do that same thing, right? Like I was that guy that's sitting there, uh, calling, yeah. uh, churchgoers, uh, Bible thumping goody goodies, right? Like I remember, <laughs> I remember saying that at one point in time and now like I'm on the other side, I'm like, you know what? Sure. There's probably some people in different churches that are going to be a little judgmental about things, but, uh, yeah. as a whole, we're all pretty darn good and, and we're all human. So we all still make mistakes, but he right, still right. loves us and he's still there for us. So man, yep. it's uh, so awesome having you today, man. Thank you for doing this with us. What, um, how can the listeners uh, follow you, uh, social media accounts, different things like that so they can uh, see what's going on with you and uh, see you ride and all those good things. Yeah. Um, I have uh, two pages actually. One is just for ministry and just hanging out with people that's um, uh, elevate underscore BMX. 
And uh, my personal account, that's Gospel Cyclist. Um, that's the one I'm on most. Uh, Facebook, my first name and last name, Adrian Harris, A-D-R-E-A-N Harris. Um, yeah, so hit me up on there. Send me a message. You know, I've gotten people that, that kind of say, hey, pray for me, or I love that. Trust me. I absolutely love that someone sends me a message saying, hey, can you pray for me? You know, get a hold of me. Um, that's how I, I, I that's that's how I do ministry. Even people all over the world, I, I've been able to pray for through social media. You know, I'm yep. still friends with them today. So hit me up. Don't be shy. <laughs> Absolutely. Jimmy, thank you so much. Uh, hit up Adrian. Uh, follow his pages if you have prayer requests or him to us either way. FastLifeMinistries.com. And as always, yeah. all of our uh, Fast Life Instagrams, uh, YouTube, Facebook, all that fun stuff. Adrian, once again, thank you so much for being here. Have a blessed oh, morning. Thank you. Enjoy your day today. And for all the listeners, we can't wait to catch up again soon. And all we're right. out. Thanks for having me, guys. See you around. Thank you for listening to Faith in the Fast Life, brought to you by Fast Life Ministries. If you enjoyed the podcast, please take a minute to rate, like, and follow our podcast page so you can be the first to see new episodes every Wednesday. If there's someone who came to mind during the podcast, please send this to them. People like you sharing the show really helps us to get God's message out to a wider audience. Visit FastLifeMinistries.com to give to our podcast and keep us running. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.